Hello friends, this video on periodic classification of elements part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1. Let's study the history of periodic table, how this periodic table came. The first thing happened is 1979, that time there were 33 elements. I think I have uh, discussed the history of elements, the metals and non-metals, how it came, right? So by 19, uh, by 1789, there were only there were only 33 chemical elements, only 33, right? So that time, this guy Lavos here, what he did was he published a list of these 33 elements and he grouped them into gases, metals, non-metals, and earth. These were the classification at that time. Right, so these 33 elements he grouped because the list increases, it's easy to group and then find, right? So he, he grouped these uh, 33 chemical elements into these groups. And there was a first effort to group these elements. They were elements, but nobody bothered to group those. This is the first effort by Lavoisier to group these elements. And then this guy uh, came. Debonier. So this guy Debonier, what he did was he grouped the elements into uh, triads based on their chemical property. We'll discuss more in detail about these. And then he observed that uh, the atomic mass or the middle one is equal to uh, the mean of the first and last, right? So we'll explain more on these. Bar. But he he tried to um, what do you call? group these uh, elements based on the atomic weight. So this was the first grouping happened in 1987-89 based on the uh, whether it's metal, non-metal or earth. These guys did the grouping based on the atomic weight. So this is the first time somebody tried to group based on atomic weight where atomic weight was used. And let me tell you one thing, this atomic weight, how it came was, you remember the history 1804. Yeah, 1804. Because till 1789, there was the concept of atomic weight was not there. Okay, the concept of atomic weight came in 1804. How this guy Dalton, you must have heard about this guy, right? John Dalton. He gave this atomic theory that the atom, I mean, everything is made of a particle called atom, which is unbreakable that time he told. And then uh, the law of conservation of mass applies in this case also. And then with that, what happens is, all these chemists, they did a lot of reactions, chemical reactions, right? For example, hydrogen reacts with water to give H2O and they made a balanced reaction. And from that, they found that uh, some gram of this guy reacted with some gram of this to get this. So with all these uh, reactions and we call stoichiometry, they found the atomic weight of the element. For example, hydrogen has some atomic weight. Oxygen has some atomic weight. These atomic weights were found based on chemical reaction or stoichiometry. So, by because this time the electrons was not discovered, right? The atom was not even discovered. Atom was just a hypothetical, uh, uh, we can say hypothetical thing because these chemists used to believe that there is something called atom and uh, which is unbreakable and that will have atomic weight. And this atomic weight was found based on the chemical properties by, by the reactions, right? So they do different reactions and based on that they found that, okay, this guy, uh, you know, 10 grams of hydrogen reacted with 50 grams of oxygen to form, let's say, 60 grams of water. I'm just guessing numbers. So with that, with those values, you know, with a lot of uh, equations, they found the atomic weight of almost all the existing chemical elements. Now, please note, these were just found by chemical reactions. So at that time, by 1804 and that time talking about the, that time atomic number was not even there right the only thing was that was there was atomic weight for a particular uh, element and that was decided by stoichiometry this by reactions so with this but it had a lot of limitations then this guy uh, john uh, newland he did one great thing was he again used uh, the atomic mass because that was the hot topic there uh, in, in 1800 era because 1804 is Dalton gave this theory that the atom, I mean, anything can neither be created nor can be destroyed, can be just converted. And with that, they found the atomic masses of the elements. So he did one thing. He 
arrange the element just based on the atomic mass, right? So you see that this De Bonnier guy, he grouped based on the chemical properties because this guy also tried to group based on the chemical property, but he also used atomic weight formula. But this guy, he just used atomic weight only, right? He, he arranged elements just by atomic phase, increasing order of atomic masses. And he found that every eight element has the property that is equal to the first element. So he started with the first and that time it, uh, 56 elements were discovered. If you see 1789, they were 33 and by 1866, they were like 56 elements, right? So he observed that uh, for all these elements, right? So it was falling apart. So the property, property of first and then you go, you go to eight and then you go to nine. These were matching, right? First and ninth were matching. So I will explain more on this, but just to understand that this guy did a great thing and he just used only atomic mass and he just, he, he just arranged those elements in the order of increasing atomic mass and he found that every eight element uh, repeat the property. So that means he found that there was a, a periodicity in the property of the elements. But it has a lot of loopholes and it could not accommodate new elements that were found. So this guy mentally, and he did a great job actually. I, I believe that this periodic table uh, is mainly by Mendeleev. So if you see, I feel that 90% of the contribution is in my Mendeleev only for the periodic table. What he did was, he arranged based on their fundamental property, that is atomic mass and chemical property. So at that time there were 63 elements. So what he did was, he, he uh, uh, reacted those elements with uh, oxygen and hydrogen. Some elements with oxygen and hydrogen because at that time uh, these equations were pretty much known. And then um, their reaction property he found and then uh, with that he arranged them in the particular order and that's almost equal to our new break table but that time he used atomic mass because obviously that time atomic number was not even known right so that guy used this break table and it was a big hit it was pretty good success but it had few limitations very few limitations and those limitations were uh, covered when this guy mostly showed that atomic number is a better uh, way to or better element for creating a periodic table and please note that this atomic number concept was discovered by this guy only 1930 if you must have uh, noticed 1896 this guy Thomson Thomson he found electrons right he found electrons correct and then since it was found that electrons was a uh, neutral charge, so if there are n number of electrons, there has to be n number of a positive charge called protons, right? And with this, uh, this guy, this guy Mosley, actually he was not a chemist, he was a physicist, right? So he, he knew uh, how to find the number of electrons for any element by using uh, the rays, uh, the rays emitted by that element, right? So he, he, he found a way to find the actually atomic number for any element. So this by 1896, Thomson told that there's something called uh, this guy electron. And 1890 and 1880 was the era where radioactivity was a hot topic. So you must have seen the other Ford and Mary uh, Curie, all these people existed at that time when the radioactivity was a hot topic. And that time, uh, this guy was an expert in the radioactivity field and he was able to find the number of electrons for any, any given element by, by uh, observing the pattern of the rays emitted. So we'll not go deep into that. That's, you may study in the higher class in the physics. But just understand that this guy was able to find a new term called atomic number which is nothing but the number of electrons or protons, right? And then he found that atomic number is a better way to judge or to create a periodic table, right? And with this, the moment he used atomic number, uh, Mendeleev uh, periodic tables, anomalies were all gone and it was a very good periodic table. So we'll learn more in detail about this, but just understand this, how it went. The first effort was by this lab was here, 1789. He classified uh, elements into gases, non-gases and metals, non-metals. Then this guy Debonier, based on the chemical property, he created tyrides, trades actually. Then this guy Newland, uh, Newland he, um, he showed that when you uh, arrange the elements in the order of increasing energy mass, it follows a pattern. So there was a, a kind of a, a thing that there, there's a pattern that existed. And with this, this guy mentally did a good amount of research and 
he almost created a periodic table but that time he was not even aware of atomic number right the only thing they could know was the atomic mass and that from stichometry see now we have a lot of instruments to actually view the atoms right so the physics has uh, uh, physics uh, has helped chemistry to view the atoms because it has given uh, good instruments to actually visualize the atoms but at that time nothing was ex existing so uh, the atomic mass was all formed by chemical reactions and this was the only thing element existed so this guy created this uh, periodic table based on this and you see after this there's a long gap of almost uh, 40 45 years right and then this atomic number came and this guy found that dude if you use atomic number instead of atomic mass things are fine and that's what he did right and then we got a better periodic table Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.